I refuse to have a baptism that nobody in the Bible has. That's right. That's what makes me challenge your baptism, Denver, Colorado. That's right. And if you want to be right, I don't. You would. You, you wouldn't look at your title. Whether you a deacon or an elder or a bishop or some old raggly missionary or deaconess or hypocrite and assistant pastor or a fake junior elder That's right. that don't exist in the Bible. That's right. You're not even a junior hypocrite. You're just a hypocrite. That's right. All of you fellas running around here, junior elder, junior bishop, junior pastor. Where all you juniors come from? There's no such thing in the Bible. No. Yeah, yeah, hear me good, hear me good, Denver. I want to roast you like chestnuts on an open fire. <laughs> That's right. One way to do it. One way. And they got to be written here. That's right. All right, son, what did he say? I was in St. Luke chapter 3 and verse 13. Says what? And he said unto them, exact no more. Wait a minute. You better give chapter and verse. St. Luke chapter 3 and we're at verse 13. What is it? And he said unto them, exact no exact more. Exact no more than that which is appointed you. That means don't do no more. No more. Than what God appointed you. That's right. Never mind what your bishop taught you. That's right. He can jump and shout and go off with some tongues all he want. Wait till his tongues is over. That's and right. when he's done, bishop, show me that in the Bible. When he's done, just wait. You can look at your nails if you like. Bishop, show me that in the Bible. That's right. I guarantee you, come right out that spirit. That's right. We press people with Bible like you squeeze juice out of an orange. <laughs> That's right. Exact no exact more. Exact no more than that which is appointed you. If the Lord Jesus never appointed women to preach. And the apostles didn't have them. Right. Then the United Pentecostal, the PAW, the Pentecostal the Assemblies of the World, That's right. Church of God in Christ, the Assemblies of God, uh, Church of the Living God, the Church of God and Prophecy. Right. All of the churches that have women evangelists and women deacons and right. women bishops and women pastors, you got to do exact, exact. no more than that than which what the you. Bible said. And I can't find not one, not one. woman preacher in the Bible. That's right. So why you got them in your church? That's right. That goes forth if I got any undercover pocketbook preachers here. <laughs> Amen. You grown men following women preachers. Amen. Don't you know the Bible says the head of every woman is the man? Amen. How are you the head at home and you the tail at church? That's right. Some of you spineless things are the assistant pastor to your wife. You ain't no man. No. If you thought you was, you'll find out today you're not. That's right. Are you listening? In the book of Isaiah, chapter 3, and we'll start at verse 12. Who do you think he is to come in Denver like this? <laughs> Did you at all think... <laughs> Did you think for one moment For one moment That I was any different From what you see on social media The only difference is You just can't turn me off now Because I'm live <laughs> That's right I'm live now Amen And everywhere and we God have blessed the truth of God We have the truth of God Follows literally In every state in the country Amen Every state the people are waking up by thousands and coming out of their churches. They're, they're, listen, you got to be more loyal to Bible than you are to organization. Are you listening? Stop looking at how long you've been in some movement. Stop looking at how much money you gave. The most important thing in life is God and your soul. You can be in the movement for years. But if you die without the truth, being in that movement won't save you. You will go to hell being a pastor over a thousand. That's right. Are you listening? Isaiah chapter 3, we'll start at verse 12. Follow me in your Bible. Isaiah chapter 3 and we're at verse 12. Hear me good, As hear me good, mm -hmm. hear me good. Amen. That's why people over social media, many of them hate this. Oh, yeah. That's why you hear preachers by the number yelling about Geno Jen, <laughs> Geno Jen, Geno Jen. They, they're trying to turn people away from this. Yes. Because even the devil knows this is that. That's right. That was spoken of by the prophet Joel. That's right. The devil know it. The devil know you can turn on social media and you don't hardly hear nobody. No. 
taking an uncompromising, unwavering stand oh. on the scriptures. Today, today, that day everything got a feel-good message. That's right. Or got a lie. God got a miracle with your name on it. God ain't got nothing with nobody name on it <laughs> but his. That's and right. that's the name of Jesus Christ. That's it. You don't want that? You stay home and don't go to nobody church. Amen. Here be good, Denver. Isaiah chapter 3 and read verse 12. Follow me. As for my people. Listen at this. As for my people. All these people following women preachers. Mm -hmm. There's a shame on you. Grown men. Grown you hang men. around that woman so long. That's why you act feminine. Yeah. That's why you got all these tiny Tims in the church. That's right. All on the choir, all in the pulpit, running revivals, homosexuals running revivals, oh, yeah. downright straight up faggots Go being ahead, man. bishops and Go faggots ahead. for elders Go and ahead. faggots for assistant pastors and Go ahead. faggots for deacons. Oh, you shouldn't say that. If you're not a faggot, it shouldn't bother you. <laughs> Am I right, man? Preach it, brother. If you're not a faggot here in Denver, Colorado, then what I'm saying shouldn't bother you. Am I right, I say? <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. What did he say, William? Isaiah chapter 3 and read verse 12. What is it? As for my people. Listen at the Bible. As for my people. We want to roll on women preachers. <laughs> That's it. Because some of you may tip out when I roll on this. Amen. Because some of them, your mom was a woman preacher. Oh, yeah. Yeah, some of you fellas here, your wives may be women preachers. Oh, yeah. Your aunt, your grandma. Yeah. When you wake up, you, your grandma won't lead you no more. No. No, oh, no. You, you, won't let, you won't let that woman get up and teach Sunday school and you sitting there. That's and right. you're a grown man. That's right. You are stepped out of there. That's so, right. So help me. The Bible said if she wants to learn anything, the ask her husband at, at home. At home. We'll read that later. You better start from Old Testament and then let's travel to the new so we can item on the cake here. Isaiah chapter 3 and we're at verse 12. All right. As for my people. My people. Children are their oppressors. God is talking about his people. My people. Children are their oppressed and, and women. Women rule over rule them. Rule over them. Oh, my people. Oh, my people. Oh, my people. Oh, look at that. He don't sound too happy. <laughs> oh, my people. Don't sound too happy at all. Old man people, they, they which lead, lead thee, thee, cause thee to error. Call, why don't the other preachers feel this way? That's right. That's right. Bishop wife is the assistant pastor. Yeah. Like T.D. Snakes, supposed to have turned his whole church over to his daughter. Yeah. From the frying pan to the fire. That's right. That's right. That's what the bishops are doing now. Amen. They keep it all in the family, like the mafia. Yeah. Have you waked up yet? That these churches are nothing but family-owned businesses? Yeah. Right. Haven't you waked up to that yet? Oh, yeah. Look at the church you go to. Father, bishop, son, assistant pastor. Right. Or oh, if the bishop is about to die, he's grooming a family member. That's right. Because he want to keep that church in his family. God's church Hallelujah. is not a family-run church. It's a spirit-run church. That's right. Am I right, I said? That's right. Glory to God, if I die, don't look for no Jennings. No. Look for God to make a preacher. That's right. Don't look to get my son. Who is that? Amen. There ain't no power in the name Jennings here. No. The power is in the name of Jesus Christ. That's right. You ain't down there telling Jennings, 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 Jennings. <laughs> oh, Jennings, Jennings. Oh, you, no. You a fool, man. That's a fool. Huh? That's right. And this is what many of these churches done. They're built on family. Bishop is the father. The wife is the financial secretary. That's why you don't know what's going on. Yeah. Got you selling dinners, baking pies, and making potato salad, and frying up your chicken until your family can't eat. You out there having car washes and everything, sending your, sending the bishop children to the best schools in the city. Yeah. To hear your children standing out there waiting for a broken down yellow bus. <laughs> and the schools got books all the way from the 1930s. That's true. <laughs> And wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Any time you can send the bishop children to the best schools, take that money and send your own children to the best, best schools. Amen. Are you listening? As for my people, don't buy your bishop his car. Don't buy him his house. Don't buy him his suit. Don't buy him no plane. Don't buy him no boat. Let him get a job and go to work. 
apostle Paul was a working man. That's right. The Bible said he was a tent maker. maker. The other apostles was working men. That's right. They caught fish naturally. That's right. I'm a working man. Yeah. I work in real estate and also in investing in cars. Oh, yeah. Different style of cars. I'm a working man. That's right. Ain't no board of directors hire me. No. Ain't no board of directors can fire me. No. My wife, the, the bedroom don't dictate the gospel. That's right. Not at all. That's right. The Bible dictates the gospel. That's it. If I preach the word of God by the Spirit so hard, my wife get mad and turn her back. Thank God and be so cold. I'm going to come back with the Bible and thaw the whole bedroom out. I'm going to thaw it out until she said, yes. <laughs> Yes, I said. That's right. Glory to God. That's right. Hey, uh, hey. come on, son. Isaiah chapter 3 and at verse you know, 12. I love this. I really love the word of God. It's the greatest thing under the sun. We can preach it without fear. Amen. When you can preach it without fear, nobody's dictating the money you get. No board of directors vote you. You don't have to worry about people voting you out because God put you in. That's and it. in due time, if it's God will, he'll take you out. That's right. What did it say, sir? As for my people, children are their oppressors. Children are their oppressors. And women, women rule, rule over them. Over them. Oh, oh, my, my people, people, they which leave thee cause the the and destroy the way of thy path. They mess you up. All right, right son. Isaiah chapter 9 at verse 16 and 17. Let's look at the young men follow women preachers. For the leaders of this people the leaders of caused this people them to caused error. You, that's what got the churches a mess up. That's right. You people got too much confidence in the leaders. You yeah. take what the preachers say, and they'll tell you, just do what I say, not what I do. Amen. Imagine that preachers got two and three or four or five wives, and you dumb, ignorant, hell bound church goers that's looking at me now go, ahead, go to that church yeah. and say he's anointed. No, he's tired. <laughs> Amen. Dealing with all them women, man. He ain't got no anointing. He's tired. That's right. Huh? That's right. Oh, take God. Come on, son. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 16 and 17. What is it? For the leaders of this people caused them to err. And what? And they that are led of them are destroyed. They that are led by these kind of leaders, they are lead you to hell. Therefore the Lord shall Therefore have no joy. God will not be happy. In their young men. You got young men following women preachers and false churches and amen and the preachers that keep you from leaving he would ordain you or throw a position on you and now you got the position you said oh man i can't leave bishop now he True. just ordained me in other words he used position like uh, a master put a leash on a dog he That's just right. used a position to tame you to keep you from rising up and fighting against his lies yeah the false prophets know how to manipulate you. Oh, yeah. You know you ain't qualified to be an elder, so he make you one anyway. Oh, yes. Or he give you a fake office, district elder. That's right. That's right. Or he give you another fake elder, a fake office, junior elder. And you walk around crying, your wife so happy. Oh, oh my, my son, my husband, he's, he's, he's a junior elder. Oh, praise him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Listen, a junior elder is equal to an American $3 bill. Oh, yeah. Wipe your tears away. Your husband or your son just been duped. Oh, the yeah. bishop just gave him a title because the bishop got tired of him being questioned moreover. So he decided to give your husband or your son a title to shut his mouth up. That's right. And once he get that title, bishop don't hear no fight out of him no more. No more. Hear me good. Isaiah chapter 9, now we're at verse 17. What is it? Therefore the Lord shall have no joy in their young men. You young men, following young women preaching. Men. That's why you act like sissy so much. That's right. All on the choir with lips shining like armor all. Amen. Huh? Amen. Amen. Don't, <laughs> don't clap like a man. You're up there singing, God's not dead. He's in the light. Hey, Bob. We'll take the Bible and knock your chin down. Yeah? Look at all the sissy, sissy preachers running revivals right in your church. They come and let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. I was pretty glad when they said it to me. <laughs> uh -huh. He don't say I was glad when he said it to That's me. Right. He said, oh, I was pretty glad. <laughs> That's the <laughs> You understand. Hallelujah. So the, this, this stuff, the preachers let get by. Yeah. He's friends with the homosexual community. Oh, yes. He's afraid to speak out against them because the preachers today are afraid of being threatened, yep. number one, sued, number two, and losing members, number three. Amen. So they will justify any piece of trash. Yep. That's why they got praise dancers in your church. Oh, yes. 
turn the music on and just a bunch of people just dance around and do steps all up in the pulpit which turns to a stage right. the sisters in the church twerk in Jesus name yes they do put on little ballerina outfits and all that stuff and just dance around or the choir dance off Kirk Franklin held bound worldly music that's right Huh? That's right. Bishop, he's sitting right there with rings on every finger, Everything. bracelets all on his hand, oh, yeah. necklaces all on him, looking like a like Mr. T's brother. <laughs> but like a regular neighborhood pimp. Amen. And his wife looked like a ha a harlot. That's right. Face all painted and lips all red and earrings and eyebrows arching and fake eyelashes and hair from Walgreen or CBS. Amen. Toenails all painted. And here she is, 75 years old, with an ankle chain around her ankle, cutting down all the circulation to her calf. <laughs> what? And yeah. then the preacher tell you, God ain't looking at your hour. He looking at your heart. That's a lie. That's a lie. God tell us men, it's a shame to have long hair. Your heart don't grow hair. Amen. That's outward. Outward. That's outward. That's right. Don't tell me God don't ain't don't care how you look outward. No. If when God changed your heart, everything on the outside will fall in place. That's right. I don't blame the people. Many of the people don't know better. No. Thank God. But when you hear the message of holiness yeah. and sanctification, see, being holy is an old message. Old. It's old. Many of you heard it from your mother, yeah. from your father, from your grandparents. Oh, yeah. Many of the old preachers that are dead used to preach some holiness. But my God, man, these young fellas stepped in the pulpit yes. generation after generation. Now the church has become more just like the party, more just like the world. That's right. And the people love it. Love it. That's why they fight me over the air because I'm a primitive preacher. That's right. I'm like someone still living a stone age. Oh, yes. I live in a stone age with Bible. Oh, yeah. And man, we come out with the Bible bat in our hand, hitting the whole pulpit across the head. Go ahead. And telling the pulpits of the world, you either come back to Bible or everybody's going to hell. That's right. Everybody got to come back. That's right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's right. Come on back. I don't care how young you are, how old you are, what your mother and your father let you get away with, God won't. No. What your pastor let you get away with, God won't. Oh, no. You got to do it God's way or everybody is stopped. That's right. That's right. They're going to be stopped, you know. Oh, yes. And one thing about it, God said he never left himself. Without a witness. Glory said God without a witness. Without a witness. Amen. So when God sent men and that man, those men die, I don't care how much time transpired, God eventually raised somebody else up. Oh, yes. And, you know, I used to run track, you know, running hurdles. And we used to run with the baton sometime when we didn't run hurdles. And we have to stand there waiting for our, our uh, the brother come around and we start stepping. Stepping in time. And when that baton get in our hand, we take off. Oh, yeah. That's the way it is when God send men. God send men while, he, while they on this race. And when that man about to die, the same truth he had oh, yeah. fall right in the hand of the next one. And he started that race. Oh, yes. And when he run that race, it is time about to die. That same truth That's right. is passed to the next one. That's right. It doesn't matter what nationality he is. No. It doesn't matter how his height or his stature. No. Oh. He come along with the same thing. That's and right. when he get a hold of it, the spirit right. will deal with him to preach the same thing. That's right. Oh, it's that God when Moses died, the journey to Canaan didn't change. No. Joshua didn't go another way. Oh, no. He kept the same journey. That's it. And took them to the same place. That's right. To the land of Canaan. That's right. These churches today have took another route. Oh, yes. Have went another way. Oh, yes. Have went a way different from the Lord's way. That's right. Amen. So they integrated all type of ideology and philosophy and tell you you need Hebrew, Greek, and Latin to understand the Bible. You don't need none of that. No. You need the Holy Ghost That's it. to understand the Bible. That's right. Huh? That's right. The Apostle Paul was a Hebrew of the Hebrews. Oh, Hebrews. This man was born a Hebrew. Yeah. But when Jesus stopped him, oh, yeah. amen, Paul heard that excellent voice. Oh, yeah. I hear the Hebrews say, That's right. Who art thou? Lord. And the Lord said, I am Jesus. I'm Jesus. That's right. Whom you persecute us. That's right. Amen. So it doesn't matter of your nationality. When God send men, oh, yes. get this well. 
when God sends men, he don't make that man preach according to nobody's organization. No. Are you listening? If any of you fellows here are preachers or supposed to be preachers, preach according to the doctrinal rule book oh, yes. of your organization, you ain't no preacher. No. Now go to church. That's right. Huh? Go to church. I don't care if That's you're right. from UPC, PAW, Amen, Church of God in Christ, Assemblies of God. If any preacher watching or any preacher that are here, preach according to your rule book. Yes. You no preacher. No. We all got to walk by the same rule right here. That's right. If he opened up the apostles' understanding and they're all baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, then nobody is justified with salvation any other way. That's right. Nobody. Nobody. That's why I, in my world travel, and one thing about this gospel, it have took me through so many places of the world I wouldn't dream going. Yeah. Here in America, foreign countries, thank God, we come with the same thing. Oh, yes. Amen. And whenever I see the souls of people, people are dying. Yeah. They are dying in these churches, but your preacher don't care. No. You know why? Because he's getting rich while you're dying. I remember when my uh, aunt was sick. She's passed on now. Uh, they amputated both legs before she died. She had sugar real bad. And she used to be in, in the Bible Way Worldwide Organization. Bishop Huey Rogers. Amen. Uh, the fake apostle. Hmm. And while uh, she hadn't been to church in a long time, she was in a wheelchair. He sent her a letter. She got so happy she thought the bishop was concerned about it and wrote a letter. And she opened the envelope and there was a bunch of brown envelopes in her white envelope that says you didn't pay your tithing this month. My Lord. Never mind, are you sick? <laughs> no, nothing. These preachers don't care. No. Long as you send money so the preacher can keep fuel in his car, that's all he wants. That's right. I'm telling the people, stop paying, patronizing these false prophets. That's stop right. it. Stop it. Let him get a job. If you don't know, if you don't have no skill, let him sell balloons. <laughs> Amen. Let him cook hot dogs. That's right. Amen. I saw a big truck out here today when we was out coming from the restaurant, grilling all type of hot dogs and hot sausages. Tell the preacher, get a grill. Amen. Go to Home Depot where I, like I say over the air, these false prophets say so seed in their ministry. Yeah. All right. What you do is go to the uh, flower section of Home Depot and Lowe's, get a couple of packs of seeds and mail it to the preacher and tell him, now you grow that. <laughs> That's all the seeds you would get out of me. They may let them get a job. A lot of these preachers take offense to this because we are breaking up their racket. That's right. Imagine if the preacher actually got to get a job and go to work. Go to work. And the people stop taking care of him, he'll almost lose his mind. Yes, he would. Because when the drummer leaves, that's his pinto beans going out. That's right. Choir members start leaving, that's his rice and beans. They're walking out on him. Oh, yeah. Hey, man, the organ player going, that's his chicken. That's right. Walking right out the door. That's right. Hear this now. Isaiah chapter 9, we're at verse 17. Real quick. Therefore the Lord shall have no joy shall in have the young no men. joy in the young men. Neither shall have mercy on their fatherless and widows. Tell me what everybody is who follow woman preacher and believe false teeth. For everyone is an hypocrite. And yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone. Yeah, chapter and verse. Isaiah chapter 9 at verse 17. Everyone. Yeah. Does that include Denver, Colorado? Everyone is an hypocrite. All right, Denver. Don't say I called you a name. I ain't called you nothing. No. Isaiah 9 verse open chapter your, 9 open verse your 17. Bible up and look at chapter and verse. Look at yourself in the mirror. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 17. Hear this. For everyone is an hypocrite. What about their pastor? Everyone is a hypocrite. What about the bishop? Everyone is a hypocrite. The praise dancers. Everyone is a hypocrite. And that lead praise service. Everyone is a hypocrite. The lipstick wearing wife of the preacher. Everyone is a hypocrite. Everyone is a hypocrite. The shorty short pants of the preacher's daughters. Everyone is a hypocrite. Do you hear this? Everyone is a hypocrite. And what else? And an evil doer. Tell me, do they preach the truth? And every mouth speaketh folly. Every mouth. You better give me Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. A great horrible thing. I believe the fifth chapter. Fifth chapter. And the thirtieth verse. All Ten right. verse. Everybody all right? Amen. Jeremiah. Only in your Bible. Jeremiah chapter five. We'll start reading at verse You know, 30. it's a beautiful thing when we go to different places and see how excited sincere souls are for the word of the Lord. That's true. Amen. There's, there's, there's a starving, starving millions out there. Oh, yeah. Millions are starving. That's right. 
Millions are starving and millions are tired yeah. of this watered down trash called Christianity. <laughs> That's right. Go to church on Sunday, carry the Bible with your children, thank you doing God a favor. Hmm. It is time for every viewer and every listener and you that are here to judge yourselves. Oh yes. Either you're doing it God's way or you're not. That's right. And the reason why is the preachers, so many of them, black, white, Hispanic, Filipino, African, everything, all around the world yelling about Pastor Jennings, they want to turn people away from this warning. Oh, yes. You know, they didn't want to hear Noah. No. Because God gave Noah a message that was different from everybody's message. That's right. Holiness has a message different from every religion in the world. And that message is synced in the Bible. Oh, yes. And nobody can get me out the Bible. Listen, if you gave me a million dollars a second, I'd take it and buy churches with it and then <laughs> blast you with more Bible. That's right. That's right. I'm a preacher that cannot be bought. No. Ain't nobody's hoe. You can't buy me. Oh, no. I was made a preacher. That's right. And I was made by hands of heaven. That's why I go in anybody's city, anybody's town, anybody's village, anybody's country, anybody's territory, and burn it up. Go ahead. With a garden right off in the sunset, living happily ever after. That's right. Huh? That's right. We're going to huff and puff and blow your false church down. Amen. Hear this now. Jeremiah chapter 5. The only false prophets that holler over social media are, uh, you know, every hit dog holler. That's right. I don't care how tough a dog, I don't care how tough a pit bull is. No. You take a car and hit that pit bull while it's crossing, you're going to hear him. <laughs> He holler. Oh, yes. So these false prophets that yell about us over social media is because the track the trailer of the scriptures, all 66 and plus books <laughs> done hit them. That's and right. they hit them so hard, they holler. Oh, Gino, 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 Gino. They hollering. Your pastor is a hit dog. A hit dog. I want you viewers get this. Preach it, man. You're sitting on the hit dog. That's right. And I'm going to keep hitting them till I make them bleed out. <laughs> That's right. Are you getting me? Amen. Hear this now. Jeremiah chapter 5. We'll start reading in verse 30. I know that really burned their britches up, but Preach. I love it anyway. Oh, yes. Come on, son. Jeremiah chapter 5. We're starting at verse 30. Follow me in the Bible. A wonderful. Listen at this. A wonderful. A wonderful. And horrible thing. And horrible thing. Is committed in the land. Is committed. In the land. The prophets prophesy falsely. Now listen, whatever church you go to, mm -hmm. how many of you have seen men in your church call, call themselves prophets? Raise your hands. Mm -hmm. Now in my coming up in falsehood, prophets are very dramatic. Yeah. You know, I mean, when you look at the Bible, the prophets just prophesy under the inspiration of the Lord and they just say what God wants them to say. That's or they're not like these dramatic hypocrites today. No. They get under some spell from hell and make all this noise either in the pulpit or behind the pews. That's right. <laughs> And then when they prophesy, have you noticed? They all talk in this robotic voice. <laughs> That's right. The Lord speak unto me to tell all of you. The Lord says, you better stop. You want to perish. The Lord says, you're going to stop. You're going to perish. You robotic hypocrite. That's right. Yeah? Almost doing the robot like they're Michael Jackson. <laughs> Amen. Yeah? Amen. And the people fall for it. That's right. Yeah, people. Give me, read that yes. and give me comparing spiritual things with spiritual. With spiritual. I want to teach you real good, Denver, Amen. so Amen. you don't go to your church tomorrow. That's right. I don't need to go to your church tomorrow. No. I don't care what position you have. Your whole church and your pastor need to be here. Oh, yes. Come out of your churches. Come out. Which one? All of them. Oh, yes. Come out of every church that's here in the city of Denver. Come out of it. Come out. Leave it. Amen. Let your pastor get a job and go to work. That's right. I want you to follow me in the Bible. Get this good. Jeremiah chapter 5 and at verse 31. Listen. The prophets prophesy falsely. The prophets prophesy falsely. And the priests bear the rule by the their preachers. means. The preachers are up on their own. And my people. God's people. Love to have it so. They love it. And what will you do in the end thereof? What are you going to do at the end? At the end. You've been so spoiled. That's right. By sugar. It's like a mother who always gives their sons and daughters candy. And then those same sons and daughters go to their grandparents' house. 
where they get black eyed peas and butter beans and collard greens and turnips and uh, chicken and liver. Amen. And that child think and that's wholesome food. No cotton candy, no corn candy, no Mikey Nights, no good and plenty's, no, none of that. No chico sticks, <laughs> no payday, none of that. And that child can get away with his parents sitting there and pout, I'm not going to eat that. But let him try that at his grandmother and grandfather's table. I'm not going to eat that. Grandmother, just look at it. You're not going to do what? <laughs> I eat. I eat. Because he or she understands where sense. grandparents are, there's a different rule of law. Oh, yes. You're not going to be spoiled. You're going to be obeyed. You're going to obey or you're going to get the whip cracked on you. That's right. The children don't be in an atmosphere of discipline. That's the difference today. Church is no place of discipline. No. You smoke in church. You drink in church. You swap wives That's in right. church. That's right. You swap husbands in church. in church. The preacher can have all the wives he want in church. in church. The members or the women can have all the husbands they want in church. In church. You can live together not married in church. Yeah. Oh, yes. Nobody say nothing. No. You can commit, have babies, you're not married in church, in church. and you're not chastised in church. That's right. Nobody say nothing. That's right. The bishop don't say nothing. Nobody say nothing. No. And I often preach this. If the bishop of your church can lay you out for doing any type of wrong and can lay his children out, Oh, yes. Who done the same wrong. Oh, yeah. He ain't fit to be no Not preacher. Fit. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. If the bishop of your church can rebuke you openly for doing something wrong openly, Open. and your children do the same thing openly, but bishop want to keep that quiet, you got a hypocrite for a pastor. That's right. Open rebuke is better than secret love. That's right. Am I right? Hear what it says. The prophets prophesy falsely. Prophets prophesy falsely. And the priests bear rule by their means. Yes. And my people love to have it so. Why, how did God people get like this? And what will ye do in the end thereof? How did God people get like this? Get like this. Where many skirts become the norm in church. That's right. Someone said, well, why these preachers don't say nothing? Because they love to say it. That's right. That's why they don't say nothing. They see you, see you mini skirt wearing women and wearing something to cut deep as my jacket, showing your cleavage, short dress no longer than my jacket. This is all you got on the church. Something that's like my jacket. Yeah. Cut down here, short as here, and you jumping and shouting in front of Bishop. <laughs> you get that Bishop in the spirit. Oh, gee. <laughs> <laughs> Bishop, he doing the two step. Why are you shouting? Oh, Jesus. You got the whole deacon board. Praise him. He looking at you. That's right. Oh, right. half naked Christians. Oh, yeah. Don't tell me God ain't looking at you, Howard. Oh, yes. Put some clothes on the people in church. That's right. Have naked mini skirts and little halters and blouses about this big and wigs on and finger rings and earrings and fake hair, fake fingernails. And hey man, got your toenails painted, fingernails painted. Men and women got your eyebrows arched, fake hair. That's right. What's the matter with you? That's right. You 80 years old with a midnight black wig on, <laughs> with <laughs> silver eyebrows. Amen. Grandma, you Mitch Mac. Grandpa, you Mitch Mac. Oh, yeah. Old Bishop dying his gray beard. Who you trying to impress? That's right. You trying to pick up your great great granddaughter? Mm. Old Bishop, 75 years old, making babies by the choir members of the church. That's right. And people sit right there and say the Lord work in mysterious ways. Not that mysterious. No, no. This type of preaching is needed today. Oh, yeah. This is necessary preaching. Necessary. Huh? Amen. God wants to put the church back in order. That's right. That's what God is doing. That's right. He's putting the church back in order. Oh, yes. When God sent men, he sent men to put the church back in order. That's it. Folk walking around 
I declare when Jesus comes, what are you going to get out of it? What you going to get out of it? You ain't following the doctrine of the apostles. You're not going to be glad. No. God's church is not ready. Oh, no. At all. Oh, no. Because according to the Bible, he's going to present to himself a glorious church not having a spot. Not having a, a spot. spot. Oh, Rachel, though, any such thing, but that is, should be holy. That's it. That's the kind of church he's going to present himself to. That's Amen. Right. Now, the Bible ain't never said he's coming looking for a church. When you look for a thing, you lost it. Yeah. He didn't lose his church. No. He know what church he left here. That's right. He's coming for the same thing he left. That's right. He left scripture here. He left scripture to govern the body of Christ. That's right. And he's coming back for the body of Christ. That's governed by the same scripture. And the body of Christ will not be nobody's organization. That's right. That's right. Get me now. That's right. So you preachers out there that's baptizing these thousands of people, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, they still send us. Oh, yes. I'm calling for all the bishops now. All of them. Amen. I want to tangle with all of you. Oh, yeah. Church of God in Christ, come on, bishop. Yeah. Church of God in prophecy, come on, bishop, prophesy this. Oh, yeah. Assemblies of God, come on. Yeah. I don't care who you are. Yeah. You that baptize Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, none of you say. None of you. You're all wrong. That's right. Your overseer, your bishop, your founders are wrong. That's right. That's Come right. on, son. Give me the book of Corinthians. I mean, a great and uh, hard, no, give me a uh, spiritual thing. Yes. I want to compare spiritual things with spiritual. With spiritual. First because Corinthians. The churches, all the people of the churches, hear this. Everything in your church. You want to be able to compare it with the Bible. That's right. No matter what it is. The way they serve communion, go That's to the Bible. Right. If they use a tray of glasses, go to the Bible and see that Jesus used a tray of glasses. That's right. If they say you don't have to wash feet, go to the Bible. Yeah. Amen. See what Jesus said. If I wash thee not, you have no part with no me. No part with me. Huh? That's right. Go to the Bible. See that you have a woman bishop in the Bible. Because the Bible said if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desire the office of good work. For he must be the husband of one wife, not the wife of one husband. Yeah. Hmm? That's it. You see, this is a hard pill for some folk to swallow, especially if you've been taught for years that five plus five is nine. Yeah. Now we come smashing that line and tell you five plus five is ten. Right. It's not nine. That's right. And you've been taught that all your life. I know it hurt many people feelers. I've been lied to all my life. All my life. All your life. Yes, all your life. All your life. <laughs> Sometimes your parents just done the best they could because they were lied to too. Yes. What about those that didn't know about the baptism in the name of Pastor, uh, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, Pastor Jennings? Well, they're going to give account to God for the light, for the truth that shined while they lived. Mm -hmm. They're going to be judged by that truth, whatever that truth that stood in their day. God won't hold you accountable for what you don't know. That's right. He's not an unjust God. He hold you accountable for what you hear and then tell you, consider what I said, that God may give you the understanding in all things. Right. All you got to do is hear it once. And when you hear it once, you got to consider it consider right it. then. If you reject it and you stand before God, you're going to go to hell for your rejection. That's right. Come on, son. First Corinthians chapter 2 and at verse 13. All right. Which things also we speak. Which things also we speak. Not in the words which man wisdom teaches ah, not in the words that man wisdom teach but which the Holy Ghost teaches now if I go to what the Holy Ghost teaches, Holy Ghost teaches I go to the scriptures and I don't find nobody's organization in the scriptures no nobody nobody I just found the church by the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. He said, upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. The church by the Lord Jesus Christ. The church from the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. That's the only thing I find in here for everybody to be governed by. That's right. All these other denominations and religions and traditions. Amen. Just come on back to Bible and do it like the word of God said. That's it. Amen. No apostles now. Come tell me that. Come tell you that. Come tell me there's no more apostles now. Hmm. I make you find the scriptures where the Lord took them out the church. That's right. But the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12, 28. And God. God. Had set had some set in the some church. in the church. First apostles. Now show me where God took them out. Right. And when you, I'm a demand two scriptures. One, show me where God took them out. Two, show me what office took their place as first. That's right. 
You better not tell me the bishop is first. I make you read it. Amen. Huh? You better Amen. not tell me the pastors are first. I make you read it. And God had set God had the said church. some in the church. First apostles. The same things that was in the church then is in the church now. That's right. How in the world can you be the church by the Lord Jesus Christ if you got something in your church that's not in here? Amen. You don't got junior bishops in here. No. You don't have junior elders in here. No. You don't have women in the Bible calling themselves deaconess. No. You don't have that in here. Oh, no. Come on back to Bible. And God has You hear so. me over social media telling you, come on back. That's right. Come on back to Bible. That's right. You don't want to come back to Bible, stay home. Oh, yeah. Stay home. Don't go to no church. <laughs> I don't know whether there's any place to fish around here, but go fishing. <laughs> You're better off. Go fishing. And we'll catch all you can. Because you will soon go to hell. And God had set some in the church. God had set some in the church. First, first apostle, apostle. Let's second. go back and get what I want now. Mm -hmm. Okay, man. Back in Corinthians. Back now. in 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 13. Listen at this. Which things also we speak. Give chapter and verse again. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and at verse 13. Listen. Which, which things, things also we speak. Also we speak. Not in the words which man's wisdom teaches. That's what makes mind preaching different from everybody. Yeah. Where everybody's trying to hold on to tradition, ideology, history theory, philosophy. That's right. I'm not interested in none of that. That's right. The only thing I'm interested in Bible. That's it. You see, you learn all that trash in your church, especially in Sunday school. Especially. You learn a lot of philosophy and theology oh. in Sunday school and the Bible tells us in the book of Colossians. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. Then we go back to Corinthians. Listen at this. Colossians 2 8 says. Beware. That means look out. Lest any man. You know anybody that got a sign on their house gate Beware of dogs, you better respect that sign. Better respect. You better respect the sign he reading. <laughs> I say you better respect the sign he reading. Beware. Give chapter and verse. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. Look out. Beware lest any man spoil There's you. There's something behind the gate here. That's right. Give chapter and verse. Colossians chapter 2 and at verse 8. Beware. Beware lest any man spoil you. That's the problem with churches. You done said amen, amen, jumped and shouted and fell out and tore your clothes and tore your pants and ripped your jacket over philosophy that philosophy. you thought was Bible. That's right. And the Bible said, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. And vain deceit. Vain deceit. After the tradition of men. After what? After the tradition of men. It's men tradition, ordaining women to preach. Oh, yeah. That ain't Holy Ghost tradition. No. It's men tradition. Get married a second time while your first husband live and while your first wife live. That's, right. That's man tradition. That's right. That's not Holy Ghost tradition. No. Holy Ghost tradition said from the beginning it was not so. It's not so. Eh? That's right. Amen. That's man tradition. Get ordained uh, the right hands of fellowship to get in the church. Man tradition said you got to have the right hands of fellowship to get in the church. Holy Ghost tradition, the apostles gave it to apostles. That's it. The apostles didn't give it to everybody, every man and every woman, and everybody came and shook everybody's hands. No. That's not Holy Ghost tradition. No, That's no. man tradition. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's why we, we just cutting it to pieces. <laughs> huh? That's it. Holy Ghost tradition, when uh, uh, Judas died and the apostles prayed and the lot fell on Matthias. The apostles prayed and the lot fell on Matthias and the prayer was answered because the apostles uh, asked God to show us which one that thou oh, hast chosen. chosen. Man's tradition is a bunch of elders get together and pray and say they're going to elect the that's next right. apostle. That's man, that's not like the Bible. No. No, the Bible is apostles praying, that's not right. the bunch of elders praying. That's right. No. Oh, no. Now, man's tradition, you got a board of directors that call themselves an apostle, and then they elect a bishop into the apostleship. That's not Bible. No. That's not Bible. Oh, no. That's man's tradition. Man's tradition. We're going to come on back to Holy Ghost tradition. That's right. Huh? Beware. And when I come to Holy Ghost tradition, I'm coming back to what is written here right. in God's everlasting word. Beware. And if you fight the Bible, it's proof you are a hypocrite. That's right. Huh? That's right. Whether you're preacher, deacon, elder, or pastor, if you fight Holy Ghost tradition, that's right. That's atomizing the Bible. You're Hallelujah. not God's people. No. Because God said, My sheep, glory to God, will hear my voice. Hallelujah. And a stranger, thank God.
God, they will not follow. That's right. And everybody that's God's sheep, amen, when their ears come open, they start running away oh, yes. from the different strangers that is out here oh, yes. in America and Africa and Canada and Europe and everywhere. They are run away from them. Oh, yes. Amen, because they want to hear God's voice. That's it. And God's voice is spoken through his preacher. That's right. He told his apostles, it's not you that speaketh, yeah. but the voice of my father that speaketh in you. Beware. Beware. Does any man spoil you through philosophy? Chapter, chapter and verse again. Colossians chapter 2 and at verse 8. And I want to rehearse the matter how many has been spoiled. Yes. Beware. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Through philosophy. And vain deceit. Vain deceit. After the... After, after the tradition, tradition of, of men. men. After the rudiments of the world. After the rudiments of the world. And not after Christ. All right, let's look at philosophy that's taught in churches. And I'm pretty sure some of you folk can identify with it. How many of you was taught in your church or in your organization? There are five minor prophets and five major. Raise your hand. Mm. That's a tradition of men. It never been in the Bible. No. How many of you was taught that Paul died at Nero's chopping block? Raise your hand. Tradition of men, never been in the Bible. That's right. How many of you was taught that John died 96 AD in a pot of boiling oil? Raise your hand. Never been in the Bible. Never been in the Bible. How many of you was taught that the Apostle Peter was crucified, head down and feet up? Raise your hand. No such crucifixion have ever been written in the Bible. No. How many of you was taught that the prophecy of Isaiah 96, under us a child is born, a son is given, a government shall be upon his shoulders, and shall be called wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. 712 years later, Jesus came. Hmm. How many of you heard that? They ain't never been in the Bible. No. So there's a lot of tradition. How many of you was taught that the church started 33 AD? Never been in the Bible. Never been in the Bible. No. Never been in there at all. Oh. That's right. 